this so we'll start with uh, why do we need a network right and why actually we required a network right before we will going into the what is network and what is a uh, router and what is switch we just start with the basic discussion why actually we required a network right in a earlier days what happened is we need to we used to talk uh, regarding with the if we go go on old ages right we used to communicate with the help of uh, uh, pigeons right if you want to send uh, want to communicate with any one any of your relatives will develop the postal system after pigeons you will start right uh, start sending the posts uh, letters and you will put your posts uh, letters in your post office and one postman will collect that letter from the post box and then post office will decide where to send the letter right that was the initial way of communication after that we have developed the computers and all right once the computer will develops office work will be very easy right for us right before computing uh, before computers was not there everything was uh, is manually you need to make your accounts manually in your books everything you need to write it down you need to paper and pens are involved lot of bundles of files are there but nowadays it will it is not happening right you have a soft copy of everything but before the internet was emerged right before the network was emerged computer was there but if i want to send anything from one one office to another office or one department to another department what i need to do is we need to write that into the floppy or a cd rom or a or a pen drive right suppose uh, this is my one one office this is my headquarters right and this is my accounts department which is in delhi location and this is my sales department which is in uh, maybe in bangalore location right and this is in mumbai what happened is if anything anything headquarters need to send to the accounts department what they will do they will write the information into the floppy drive or into the cd rom right if network was not there or maybe they have pen drive option right but what they need to do is they need to courier that thing right and send it to their accounts department but what is the risk in that maybe your disk will be damaged in in courier maybe your data will be theft right someone has taken your uh, give some bribe to your courier boy your competitor right and they will take the cd copy your data and pack the cd again and deliver it to account department you will never come to know what happened right and also it will uh, money money is required and time consuming right data will not uh, device uh, or your floppy or cd will not deliver it to your department in a one day or in a hour in a two it will take some time right to overcome these kind of situations we have developed the network with the help of network what happened is now we can send the data through email right no courier and nothing physical media is required we directly send the through emails right we have a service provider nowadays what has be uh, what service provider will did for us we have taken one connection from here this side one connection from this side and we have create a virtual tunnel over a we have created a private virtual tunnel over a public network which will send my data encrypt uh, by encrypting the data in this tunnel and send deliver it to my different of uh, department or a different branch office right any question what i am explaining any doubt it's a simple why we need a network right any question sandil right so why do we need a network to share the information for file sharing resource sharing and the application sharing suppose we have a one server installed in my headquarters and i want to access that server with the help of lease lines with the help of connections from service providers with the help of internet we can share the we can share the information right we can make a one centralized data center and every way everyone in the world can say share that data from that data center right that is why we need a network right now question is what is network right any question yeah so now the question is what is network right 
network uh, what actually the network is if i am talking about network 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 what is network right network is nothing network is a path to reach from one destination one source to one destination it's pretty simple like that if you want to reach from delhi <coughs> from delhi to bangalore right via road you need to travel over the roads right that roads between delhi to bangalore is your network right if you go into the earlier days right if any king want to send the message to any king right what they will do they will they will used to send the messages through their horsemen right in hindi you can say that go, uh, they will have a ghod sawar right they will take the message and they will run into the another kingdom and they will put give that message to the another king and take their message and deliver it to their own king right so in a similar way suppose you have given that given the message right you want to send the message uh, if you want to send the message to this king right if we are in a older days what you will do you will call your ho- horseman right and write it down this letter and give it to them and that horseman will take the map of this destination suppose this is in bangalore right and this is in delhi right so you should know how to reach delhi to bangalore bangalore right if you don't know wh- how to reach delhi to bangalore you will never reach right so you need to take the map to reach delhi to bangalore and you will go all over the road and reach the De- bangalore and give that message to that king and that king in reply give one more message and you just run all over the roads and reaches their own kingdom in delhi and deliver that message to your king right the ro- so in this scenario the roads on which your horse will be run right you have traveled with your horse is your network between two kingdoms right and the person who has created the map for you to reach that destination is a protocol right this is your actual message and this horse is your way of transport how you are going to reach maybe you can go without horse right maybe you can use a bullock bullock cart that is the way of transport correct so network is nothing it's just a path to reach one source to another destination right it you can say uh, it is it is a generic word which you can use for anything right it is not a particular thing related to one router to another router we build a net network is anything between delhi to bangalore there is a network of roads right which you can go which you can use to reach from delhi to bangalore and bangalore to delhi right we have a ra- railway network we have a air network right we have a waterways to go some places from delhi to or uh, from mumbai to goa and other places right that all are network between two source and destinations correct any questions Pre- pretty clear what network is so to build any network between any source and destination we required some materials right to build a road we required a concrete road rollers and other machineries right so to build a network between two devices like two computers or two routers we need a some equipments right ideally why we are building a night ip network because because someone is sitting here with their own laptop or pc right and they want to access the another laptop or pc server anything right that is why we are building the network okay to build that communication between two pcs right what we need we need a devices called routers right we need a devices called switches we need a cables we need a nic card and we need a firewalls as well but in this course we are going to learn how we can build a network between two pcs and to between one source and destination with the help of router switches and these cables right and we for security purpose we can use a firewalls but agenda of this course is 
to learn how router and switches will be used to build a network okay so these are some symbols which is globally used by all vendors to denote different different equipment for router we are using this symbol right if someone is talking about router if i am and they, even in this session if i am talking about router how how i will donate the router this is my router r1 right this symbol itself says that this is the router no need to write router every time right if i am donating making this symbol this is switch for me right this is switch likewise this is for atm switch this is for bridge this is for server this is for isdn these are the generic symbols which are using throughout by different different network administrators even every vendor will using these symbol in their books and documents right so you also already have seen these symbols right samuel So let's start with network devices, right? What all network devices we required to build a network? So there are basically in, a, in any network in any setup, there are two types of devices. One is end user device, another one is network device. What end user device? End user device is your laptop, is your printer, is your server is your IP phone nowadays if I am talking about end user devices even refrigerators TVs mobile phones everything is having the van capability right everything even a AC also have the Wi-Fi connectivity nowadays right anything which which is capable of hello and user devices is anything which is capable of connecting with the internet or a Wi-Fi or any LAN network, right? Nowadays, in everything, we have a Wi-Fi cap capability, right? Mobile, refrigerators, microwaves, even ACs, tablets, TVs, right? Everything, we have a Wi-Fi capability, right? These are your end user devices. And what are your network devices? Network devices are devices which are used to build your network like router switch firewall van scalers hubs repeaters right these are your network devices okay so end user devices include computer printers scanners and other devices that provide services directly to the users right and network devices include all those devices that connect the end user device together to allow them to communicate like router switch firewall van scalers right any doubt any question in that end user network device samuel any question in end user and network device Uh, Samuel are you there so let's start with hub what is hub we'll discuss what is hub uh, hub is nothing this is one of my network device right and uh, hub is nothing is just like an extension cord electrical extension cord for me right if I want to connect uh, two PCs and I only have one port I will use hub right similarly if I have a one socket and I want to connect a multiple electrical devices I will use right this extension cord correct in similar way if I want to connect multiple PCs I will use hub they will give me more extension ports hub is just like an electrical extension board doing nothing just provide more number of ports right hub, hub only have one broadcast domain and collision domain now the point is uh, I'm, I, I have write it down here what is broadcast uh, hub is having one broadcast and collision domain right so do you have any idea uh, samuel what is broadcast domain and what is collision domain any idea
Samuel, any idea what is broadcast domain and collision domain? Also, what is what is broadcast domain? If you uh, like to answer, so that I can understand. Okay, and collision domain. Yeah, uh, more or less you are correct, but I just want to refine your understanding here regarding broadcast domain because broadcast domain, understanding broadcast and collision domain is the most important part of IP networking. If you are not uh, have a complete understanding about broadcast and collision domain, so you will find difficulty in troubleshooting the things. So these are the most important terms, very small terms in people will learn initially but forget what ed, what exactly is but that is the important with respect to the troubleshooting and other things so if i am broadcast if i am saying broadcast domain right in a, i will try to explain you in a very layman language suppose you are standing in a standing in a park in a stone right and these much people are standing in the park and you are loudly saying hello right you are saying hello right so maybe your hello will uh, these people are able to listen your hello right they are able to listen your hello but these all these group of people are standing very far from you they are not able to listen your hello right so how far your voice is travel is your broadcast domain right these all people are sitting in the same park but they are not able to listen your voice so they are not coming under your broadcast domain these all people are under your broadcast domain because they are able to listen you you are saying hello right maybe if i'm <coughs> if i'm dragging these people little bit far they will also come under your broadcast domain because now they are able to listen you as well because they are com coming they will come near to you right so broadcast domain is nothing how far your broadcast is traveling right suppose this is your hub right you have this much port and you have this PC connected here so if if I am saying hub is having a single broadcast domain means whatever this packet this PC will say, send to this port they will the hub is going to send that packet to everyone right everyone is, is able to listen that packet except the port from which you are sending the packet you are receiving the packet right the these port does not have any choice right they have to listen your packet right like this these people are standing near to you they do not have any choice if you are saying hello they have to listen your hello right they cannot they cannot deny your hello they cannot deny your sound they can they do not have any option if you are uh, uh, loudly saying hello they are they do not have any option they have to listen it right similarly in a uh, hub if this uh, switch is spent sending packet to this one right these all other port does not have any choice although this packet belongs to this guy right but they all have to listen it similarly like this suppose you only want to say the hello to this girl right this girl name is Priya suppose you want to say hello Priya right you are saying to Priya but you are saying so loud and all of them in your broadcast domain have to listen hello Priya right no matters you are telling to them hello Priya or to or not right because they all are in your broadcast domain they have to listen your voice similarly in a hub every pc which is connected to your hub have to listen each and every packet no matter it is belongs to him or not any doubt in broadcast domain any question
Samuel, any question in broadcast domain? Clear, pretty clear what broadcast domain is. How far, how far your broadcast will travel? How many people, how many devices will see this in your broadcast? When is broadcast is going to break, right? That is your broadcast domain. So, if we are uh, trying to understand in a technical term, right? If H3 is trying to, uh, sending any packet, right? Maybe H3 is trying to send the packet to H1 only, but he is sending to uh, that H3 is sending to hub, so it automatically delivered to each H2 as well. No matter H2 will uh, need need this packet or not, this packet belongs to H2 or not, but they have to listen it. That is hub. That is one broadcast domain, right? Now come to collision domain, right? In a collision domain, you answered that everything is uh, uh, in your line, right? Is your collision domain, right? That is your understanding. But suppose you are doing the same thing. You are sitting in the uh, standing on this stone in a park and saying hello loudly saying hello right and these much people are able to listen you because they are coming under your broadcast domain right now suppose in reply of your hello the everybody start saying hello at the same time right the everybody start saying replying hello at the same time is it possible for you to recognize which hello belongs to which which man, right? You only able to heard the some sound is there of reply, but you are never come to know which which hello belongs to which people, right? Which one, which person? Is it possible for you? If everybody start speaking simultaneously, it is possible for you to recognize with the help of voice which hello is belongs to which guy? No, right? But if it happen like sticks instead of everybody is saying hello or you can say this is your broadcast domain right and in reply of hello these all are saying hello to you but for you only able to recognize the voice of this man because this man is very near to you right when you are recognizing this this voice man you will say the hello to him and you are start speaking with them hello how are you right these all people are also speaking at the same time but you are not able to reply them because they are everybody is speaking at the same time only you are replying to him first because this guy is very near to you right after finishing the communication with them maybe you are able to speak with him one by one one by one right you cannot speak with everybody in a same same time right so collision domain is how many people how many devices will communicate with each other at the same time right if you are able to speak two people at the same time you you have a two collision domain if you are able to speak five people at the same time, you have a five collision domain. If you are able to speak only four people or 24 people at the same time, you have a 24 collision domains. But if you are able to speak only one people at the same time, one person at the same time, you have a one collision domain. So in a hub, you have a one broadcast domain and one collision domain. It means whatever you are sending, to hub it will received by everyone but you are able to communicate with one pc at the one time if if uh, if you have this hub you have this pc this pc and this pc so if you are talking with this guy you are not able to talk to this guy or this guy and this guy are not able to talk right because you only have a one medium we are you only have a one collision domain at the moment these two are speaking no one can speak each other or you, this guy cannot speak with him once this communication is over maybe this can be communicated maybe this can be communicated so collision domain is how many people how many device can communicate with each other at the one moment of time at the one time right
suppose i have a more people on this call right suppose i have two more guys on this call and you all three guys are saying uh, say, uh, saying to me hello right it is difficult for me to reply all three hellos at the same time so what i will do i will stop two people first i will speak with you samuel hello how are you then i will stop communication with you then i will uh, talk to other well hi brahim hello how are you where are you from what you are doing then i will stop communication with ibrahim then i will start communicating with another guy which another girl with which is maybe priya priya where are you where are you from what are you are doing so in this way one by one i can speak to uh, everyone right i cannot speak of with all of all of uh, three guys at the same time in a one call so i have a one single because i have a one single collision domain with me but if i am saying hello uh, if i am saying hello samuel on this call but that abraham and priya has to listen it because they do not have any choice even i i am saying to samuel but they have to listen to every they have to listen so right now i am acting as a hub i am having a one broadcast domain and a one collision domain whatever i am saying you all have all on this call have to listen it no matter i am saying to samuel no matter i am saying to abraham no matter i am saying to uh, uh saying to priya you all have to listen it but uh, but only i can communicate with one guy if you are saying something to me i have to answer uh, you all first then i need to stop to you then i will communicate with abraham then i am communicate with priya but only one communication at one time that is my one single collision domain when uh, another thing is if you and me are communicating suddenly priya and ibrahim will start communicating no no one able to understand right so when we stop communicating then maybe priya and ibrahim will start communicate on this call so only one connection at one time that is a collision domain how many device are communicating with each other at the single point of time any doubt in collision and broadcast domain any question samuel any question in collision domain and broadcast domain right pretty clear no doubt no question what is collision domain and what is broadcast domain now right so if i am talking with respect to the hub or hub is having the one collision domain suppose if i am uh, h1 is also sending the data to h3 same time h2 is sending the data to h3 it will be a crash because they will not come they only have the single collision domain right to avoid this situation we have a csma cd concept csma cd carrier sends multiple access this protocol will help us in case of hub to make the communication so they will send the kind of signaling to each device that this link is currently busy currently h1 and h3 is uh, speaking so please do not send the data suppose if h2 is send the data they will keep on hold they will keep on hold on this interface because these this these are speaking to each other once this communication will happen they will remove the trigger now the data will be start flowing between this so that the crash will not happen but however still csma cd is in ccna books but ideally this concept is very old because hub is completely absolute from the market there is a no point of discussing deep detail csma cd because this is a very old concept right it is like that now we have a cars two wheelers bikes uh, scooters cycles so there is a no point to know how block card will be how to uh, ride a block card or how to uh, drive a block card right there is a no point but if you have a spare time if you want to do the fun you can learn csma cd there are a number of books written on csma cd you can google it and learn it but a simple job of csma cd is to avoid crash if you have a single collision domain any doubt any question here samuel so okay third thing is 
second thing is switch what is the difference between switch and hub is switch is also giving me the number of more ports right it is kind of same similar device if I am saying about switch uh, switches look like this this is the L3 switch right so it is giving me a more number of port as well right doing the same thing which hub is doing but switch is having the brain switch is having the intelligency to forward the traffic for those interface to which the traffic belongs to means what I'm trying to say is uh, to simplify the things Hold on. suppose one device is connected to this port right one device is connected to this port right one device is connected to this port right if I am sending data to this so PC right so switch have a capability to forward that data to this port only right switch have a brain to take the decision but hub, hub does not have any brain to take the decision right this is an intelligent device what the what is the features of switch switch is having the single broadcast domain by default but have a collision domain per port means every port in a switch have its own collision domain means this switch is having the single broadcast domain means if this PC will send the packet it will be delivered to each and every port right because single broadcast domain but if this PC want to communicate to this PC at the same time this PC communicate want to communicate to this PC they can do that right because every port in a switch have its own collision domains means if you have a 24 ports in a switch you have a 24 collision domain right if you have a 48 port switch you have a 48 collision domain means in a simple words uh, every device can talk to each and everyone at the same time right and what is the uh, simple example of multiple collision domain suppose I am uh, I am on this call with you through team viewer I, I, I will take someone else on a mobile right so now I have a multiple collision domain I will say hello on this call as well as I can say hello on mobile as well right that is multiple collision domain I have any doubt in this statement any question in this statement Samuel Uh, Samuel, any question? Hello, Samuel. Hello, Samuel, any question? Hello, Samuel, you are not able to listen my voice. Hello. Yeah, Samuel, uh, any questions? Yeah, so any question in uh, till now? 
switch have one uh, broadcast domain and multiple collision domain right so further we have an option in a uh, switch to divide the broadcast domain as well with the help of vlans okay with the help of vlans sorry we can divide the switch into the couple, multiple broadcast domains right what I, what how we can do is maybe we can put these all ports in vlan 4 we can put all these ports in vlan 5 so we have a three broadcast domain one is vlan 4 broadcast domain one is vlan 5 broadcast domain and another one is default broadcast domain which is for vlan 1 right so it means those P, uh, PCs or uh, those devices which is belongs to VLAN 4 only communicate with each other. PC 4 VLAN, uh, VLAN 4 device cannot communicate with VLAN 5 because they both are in different broadcast domain. So if I want to communication between VLAN 4 and VLAN 5, we need a inter VLAN routing. That was uh, we will discuss in a earlier session. Uh, 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 in a later we will discuss a later because uh, VLAN is separate a very big topic. We have a separate class for VLAN right Any doubt in this? Okay, so now that is switch Now the that uh, another device which is which we also very familiar with that which is router Router required to communicate between two networks. Suppose this is my one network or a one subnet and this is my one network and I want a communication between these two different networks will use the router. What router will do? They will do they will do for me is a layer 3 routing. Right? They will help me in communicating between two devices. Right? Two not two devices, two network. Or two different subnets right that is the one job of the router another thing is router job is to break the broadcast domain right suppose this is the switch which is having a single broadcast domain so if this uh, this PC start speaking they will send the packet to each and every device which is connected to the switch right so now this uh, this switch will send this packet to the router as well so when the packet reaches to the router your broadcast will be stopped they will not for router will not going to forward this broadcast to this interface what router will do router will do the routing lookup they will check what they will need to do this uh, do if they have any information regarding this packet or based on the information they will forward the packet if they do not have any information they will drop the packet here only so router are used to connect uh, connect network together router route packets of data from one network to another network Cisco become the facto means that Cisco is the most popular vendor in a routing routers and router by default break the broadcast domain which I already told you broadcast will stops on router router will not forward your broadcast domain forward further they will stop there okay will do the deep drive of router and switch in this course right the agenda of this course is to do the deep drive of routers, how router will be used and how router and switches will be used. Okay, throughout 30-40 classes, whatever we will take to complete this course, we will discuss router and switch, router and switch, this is the agenda. Okay, so this is uh, what I have given today is just an overview of these devices, what exactly these devices is going to do. What is the job of these devices? right so we will uh, we will stop here today in the next class we will discuss more basics of ip route uh, ip like uh, osi models tcp details and some cisco hardware we will discuss and then we will start with the basic uh, we will start with the ip addressing and then we will go with the packet uh, static routing and then we will start with packet flow ospf and <coughs> other routing protocols right another thing is we will use gns3 lab to do the practicals 
right that lab if you are able to set up by your own that is fine otherwise i will help you out in doing the setup for this lab in a gns3 usually you are you have ever worked with gns3 samuel right the main uh, challenge of gns3 is cpu utilization right whenever you use the uh, one or two router your cpu is become 100% right correct so what i will use to do is i am going uh, doing this what i will give you is i will give you the cisco iou right in a iou you can use n number of router with 4gb ram your cpu will not going to hit right your cpu will be around 30 40 percent you can use around 15 20 router slab right with iou but to run iou you need a vmware right and we need to uh, call that vmware in gns3 like this and then we can use n number of routers i will show you how to set up the lab how to use the routers and that will definitely help you out right your what is the, what is the config ha huh, that is enough for me with the 4GB RAM and i5, you can practice up to the CCNP level. There is no issue. You just need a 5 to 6, 4 to 5 router to practice uh, GNS3 and uh, practice every scenario and everything, right? You don't need a 20 routers, right? You cannot, you can test everything with the 5 to 6 router max. The people who are testing the things with the 20 routers are just bluffing you. You don't need a, why you need a 20 routers, right? You need to just test the things you no need to create a complex network right in a virtual environment <coughs> so with this configuration uh, a C for cci lab you need a high end pc i recommend get a uh, instead of laptop get a second end server you will get it in 25000 25 to 30000 which uh, around 32 gb ram you can run that uh, uh, yeah uh, even i will give you the complete setup of uh, cci routing and everything lab i will set no need to take a lab rental or anything just you need a pc with a good configuration right so uh, let me show you how cci lab will be work if you are interested in that hold on Uh, um, I'll uh, use web IOU, right? Open it. So in this server, I have a 24 GB of RAM, which is work fine for you, fine for me. I have bite that second end server in uh, uh, second end server. I, this is the IBM thing center server, and I buy it for around 28,000 and around last seven months it's working fine for me so after cci if you want to keep it for further practice it is fine otherwise you can sell it in 20 25 000 easily otherwise if you go for the rack rental it will charge you thousand rupees per 24 hours 